Hello aspirants once again i welcome you all to the is mentorship i hope you all are doing good and your preparation is on very high peak okay you all are motivated and you are working smartly so this is your complete environment video in one go as we have been doing for the prelim sessions on our youtube channel so here we i am focusing on to cover 100 most important topics which may come in the examination <laughs> and this will be a one stop solution for you guys for complete environment and then we will be interlinking the current topics with your static part as well and this will cover around 1 to 1.5 years of topics which have been in news so this will be our last youtube prelims bites video that is on your environment we have covered uh, economy and then your international relations and then your uh, mapping we have also done science and technology in a very comprehensive way we have done and i have also published a very special economy video session you can find in the playlist by subscribing our youtube channel of is mentorship and this is our environment video and i i will make sure that after listening to this video you won't be you won't need to go anywhere else for searching any environment topics clear so with this let us start with our today's topic first topic is your bunny grassland see basically bunny grassland as you can see in the photo it's a grassland i hope that you are at that point of time ki mujhe aap logo ko batana na pade ki grassland hote kya hai theek hai it's a uh, you what you can say it's in between your terrestrial and forest ecosystem okay uske beech mein aate hain basically bunny grassland jo hai that are located at the great run of kutch in the gujarat region okay great run of kutch <laughs> what type of ecosystem and vegetation they have they they are two ecosystem wetland also and grassland also remember bunny grassland comprises both wetland also as we can see here water is also there and your grasses are also there okay so in prelims question can come that bunny consist of both wetlands and grassland so yes statement is correct this is dominated by low growing plants you can see here grasslands are always low growing plants only and halophiles what are halophiles Halophiles are those plant varieties that are salt tolerant. Halo is salt, and philes are those who live in that atmosphere. So they are salt tolerant. Basically, this means that they can able to grow in the uh, salty water as well, the wetland. And this grassland was declared a protected forest in nineteen fifty five. and then it also comes under your indian forest act of 1927 remember this is already under our protected area another thing what we want to understand is that it has a very sensitive soil ecology what type of sensitivity where sweet soil rest on salinity only 2 to 3 meters below the ground and any disturbance to the soil will bring up salinity destroying the rich productivity of the land now as as i have told you that halophiles are there so basically what happens basically see this is your bunny grassland okay and if you see the wetland area here is your what is uh, sweet soil okay this is your sweet soil and under it this is your salty soil so if any kind of disturbance happen to this area what will happen the salt will penetrate out and it will disturb the whole productivity of the land that is only it is telling very important tribal people tribal community lives here that is your maldharis very important point okay maldharis belong to which uh, inhabiting place that is your bunny now what are the threats faced by this grassland heavy uncontrolled grazing widespread ingress prosopis julifora what is it it is a very harmful tree species you should be knowing this word can also come that this word pro prosopis juliflora belong to what what is it so it is a harmful exotic tree species prosopis juliflora dams construction okay that are flowing towards the bunny is disturbing the ecosystem periodic occurrence of the drought 
as we already know that in the region of your uh, kutch region if we are drawing the diagram this is your uh, kutch region okay so frequent drought okay soil salinity that is also disturbing your uh, the land of your bunny clear so this is everything about it remember the location remember the uh, what i have told you about the tribes and other things let us move ahead with next topic that is your valley of flowers valley of flowers you can see this beautiful image which is situated in the uttarakhand state okay basically this valley of flowers has been already declared national park in 1982 and you can see that how much area it acquires no need to remember this figure just see what are facts are there it is also designated as unesco world heritage site in 2005 national park bhi hai unesco ka world heritage site bhi hai and you will be amazed to know you will be surprised to know that this valley was an accidental discovery by an avid british mountaineer and a botanist frank smith it is frank smith was a person who is responsible for the discovery of this beautiful place when he was mountaineering the region clear in 1931 remember ki valley of flowers is in uttarakhand valley of flowers has been or came in the prelims question okay in the option it was there so this is very important for you okay let us move ahead and see what is next today this valley covers around 600 flowering species exotic varieties like brahmakamal very important which is also the state flower of uttarakhand match the following mein aa sakta hai brahmakamal ek taraf aap logo ka hoga state and dusri taraf aap logo ka hoga flowers so you should be able to write it because valley of national uh, flowers is in news so this can come brahmakamal is the state flower of uttarakhand blue poppy describes as the queen of flowers can also be found here clear it is having a very rich fauna diversity fauna refers to animal like leopard musk deer blue sheep okay and this is also a very unique transition zone between your mountain ranges of zanskar and great himalayas now i hope that what is zanskar and great himalaya itna to aap log environment mein padh ke aa chuke hoge i am considering that already you are in the revision phase okay zanskar it is also a mountain region ओके okay? तो उसके बीच में ये हिमालयाज है जांसकार है उसके बीच में आपका वैली ऑफ नेशनल फ्लावर्स आता है ठीक है द पार्क लाइज कंप्लीटली इन द टेम्परेट अल्पाइन जोन यही क्वेश्चन आपका प्रेलेंस में आया था कि विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्लेसेस क्लाइज कंप्लीटली इन टेम्परेट अल्पाइन जोन आप लोगों का बहुत सारे थे नमदफा नेशनल पार्क था फिर आपका न्योरा वैली था एंड योर थर्ड ऑप्शन वॉज योर दिस वन Uh, valley of flowers so the correct answer is your valley of flowers clear <laughs> next topic is about sloth bear you can see the photo how it looks basically sloth bear ke features kya kya hain they are identified by very distinct long shaggy dark brown or black fur and distinct white or y shaped chest patch ये आप लोगों का देख रहे हो आप लोग ये चेस्ट पैच इसका वाई शेप वी शेप या वाई शेप का है वही आपका लिखा हुआ है सॉलिटरी क्रिएचर्स आर जनरली नॉक्टर्नल इन नेचर नॉक्टर्नल मतलब द वंस हु आर एक्टिव इन नाइट ठीक है द वंस हु आर एक्टिव इन नाइट सच एज आउल स्लॉथ बियर ओके डाइट इट इट इज ओमनी वोर नॉन वेजिटेरियन फीड्स ऑन मीट लाइफ स्पैन अप टू फोर्टी ईयर्स habitat where it is present it is endemic to the indian subcontinent with small populations in nepal and sri lanka very important fact question can come in prelims that it is endemic or whatever it is you should know conservation status schedule 1 of the wpa act and iucn may vulnerable hai this is also very important clear your sloth bear let us move ahead and see salt water crocodile this is your upsc question paper and you are sitting in front of that and imagine that how you are going to manage it how you will trick the paper and you will cross the cut off depends on your preparation okay okay let us see what is it it is the largest of the 23 species of extinct 
or living crocodiles clear it is one of the largest of the 23 species of your living crocodiles okay fine this includes true crocodiles alligators and caiman salt water crocodiles pe kya kya aate hain wo bataya hai true crocodiles alligators and caiman extent ka meaning hota hai abhi bhi surviving present alive koi aur living crocodile wahi likha hua hai the salty is also called as estuarian crocodile as the name suggest is typically found in the brackish water of the estuary estuary mein bhi find found hote hain what is a brackish water little bit salty little bit or very much fresh water then comes your which type of water more salinity fresh marine brackish okay brackish is having salt in good number it can also tolerate salt water in the ocean and can travel for long distance making use of tidal currents tidal currents kya hote hain jo aapke oceans mein waves chalti hain na ek direction mein that are your tidal currents aur usi currents ki help se the crocodile is moving in that direction clear salt water crocodile next your olive ridley turtle very sad sitting sad let us see what is it what is the scientific name if you want to remember you can otherwise you can leave also lepido shells olivaceae okay lepido shells olivaceae also known as pacific ridley sea turtle olive ridley sea are also known as pacific why olive because you can see the color of the turtle it is lightish green in color like olive okay these are carnivores and they get their name from olive colored the best known for their unique mass nesting is known as arabida basically aribada what is aribada where mass nesting happens huge amount thousand lakhs of olive ridley comes together and they lay eggs okay it's like a party you can say mass nesting party where thousands lakh thousand to 10000 turtles are coming together in the same beach and laying the eggs where they are found in the warm waters of pacific atlantic and indian ocean now keyword for you warm not cold clear okay basically and understand about india odisha's gahir matha marine sanctuary is known as the world's largest rookery of sea turtle okay basically you should be knowing this name where it is in odisha what is the protection status of your olive ridley schedule 1 vulnerable and appendix 1 okay and this you can see what is written here about the mass nesting it is the most extraordinary nesting habitats in natural world large group this is not large large group of turtles gather offshore in the nesting beach and that is why it is known as aribada aribada is a spanish word meaning arrival clear okay next topic is your sea cucumbers what is it let us understand basically they are these are marine invertebrates that lives on the sea floor what is invertebrates that are come on what is invertebrate what do you mean by invertebrate hmm basically invertebrate are those animals that are not having backbone these are not having backbone and these sea cucumbers are found in the sea floor <laughs> why they are named as cucumber because their shape belongs to the oblong category oblong meaning like of a cucumber okay fat cucumber they are part of a larger animal group called as echinoderms very important term okay they belong to echinoderms which also contains starfish and sea urchins ye jo echinoderms hain echinoderms mein starfish bhi aate hain urchins bhi aate hain aur sea cucumbers bhi aate hain clear distribution basically these are found virtually in all marine environment throughout the world from shallow to deep sea environment okay they are benthic what is what do you mean by benthic i hope that environment mein aap log padhe hi hoge benthic kya hota hai benthic are those who are living on the sea floor okay ya floor mein rehte hain water ke floor mein rehte hain ocean ho ya sea ho they are having both asexual and sexual reproduction type and you can see the picture next is your himalayan grey langur you can see 
basically the other name of this is your chamba sacred langur okay and it is a colobine see colobine these sab words aap log na ekdam yaad kar lo colobine refers to what meat eating leaf eating fruit eating etc to colobine refers to leaf eating monkey okay colobine they are largely arboreal arboreal means they lives on the tree बट कैन बी फाउंड समटाइम्स ऑन द ग्राउंड एज वेल ज्यादातर वो एरबोरियल होते हैं मतलब कि मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द ट्री फूड कोलोबाइन समटाइम्स फीड ऑन द फ्रूट ऑल्सो लीव तो खाते ही है एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दे आर कोलोबाइन बट दे ऑल्सो फीड ऑन फ्रूट्स वॉट इज द हैबिटेड हायर एलिवेशन बिटवीन ट्वेंटी टू हंड्रेड टू फोर थाउजेंड मीटर रेंज इंडिया पाकिस्तान एंड नेपाल clear three countries you can see this is your himalayan grey langur in india it is mainly reported from chamba valley in himachal pradesh that is why it is also known as chamba sacred langur chamba valley where is it it is in himachal pradesh okay except for khajjar kal top wildlife sanctuary its occurrence is another difficult to determine clear okay population Estimated to be even less than the less than one five zero zero mature individuals. इतने से भी कम हैं. डेढ़ हजार से भी कम इनकी मात्रा है. Living in the fifteen to twenty groups. What is the threat faced by Himalayan grey langur? Habitat fragmentation, anthropogenic activities such as logging, residential and commercial development. Clear? Okay. Let us move ahead and see what is next. Tibetan antelope. basically it is also known as chiru okay distribution where they are found endemic to the tibetan plateau that that is why tibetan antelope naam se hi pata chal raha hai and mainly lives in the northern parts of the changthang plateau native to china and india two countries remember it and regionally extinct in nepal regionally they have been extinct in nepal present in china and india presently Chiru males have thin long horns that curve slightly forwards but female are hornless remember it you can see the horns are curved okay that is only it is saying what is so shawls basically shawls you know uh, you used to uh, take it in the winter time okay and the shawl the jo shawl jis kapde se banta hai that is your shahtoosh is the guard hair obtained from the tibetan antelope shahtoosh is material that is obtained from the tibetan antelope and which is used to make the shawls highly expensive hai okay because of its high smoothness and warmth conservation basically iucn mein it's near threatened in sites mein it has been already included in 17 1979 and sale purchase and possession of tibetan antelope parts and products are strictly prohibited clear including shahtoosh including shahtoosh but still uh, the makers of your shahtoosh shawls are using it we can understand clear fine next is your amur falcon okay let us see what is it amur falcon it's the longest distance migrating raptors in the world okay amur falcon south eastern siberia and north china are breeding grounds south eastern siberia and north china siberia and china remember it they arrive in manipur nagaland arunachal pradesh in october with 2 lakh coming to manipur alone okay it is saying that they are having a huge migratory skills okay and that is why they are also known as longest distance migrating raptors in whole world they play a vital role in pest control and increasing the production of paddy and other crop okay pest control se bachate hain food what on what they feed they feed on dragon flies and that follow a similar migration path to arabian sea dragon flies are also moving in the same path as they are moving that is why they are finding them very easy to eat clear next important thing zebra zebra is also in news now let us understand 
Zebra are the fam members of horse family. Okay, by seeing also we can say they their body structure look like horse. They are similar to horse. There are three different species: plains, mountainous, and graves have zebra. Okay, zebra's main home is in Africa. But zeb, ऐसा नहीं कि बस Africa में ही है, ऐसा नहीं है. But main home आपका Africa में याद रखिएगा. The gravy zebra is the largest one. ये वाला, ठीक है? Plains, mountainous, and gravy is the largest one. Weighing three fifty to four fifty kilograms. Where is gravy zebra found? In the grasses of Ethiopia and North Kenya, Africa. Okay, <laughs> Ethiopia and North Kenya, and this is considered to be endangered in India. Remember it. Okay, gravy is zebra. Next is your northern giraffe. Basically, where they have they are distributed, they are in the eastern South Sudan and southwestern Ethiopia, Ken Kenya, and Uganda. These are also African countries. Habitat: savannas and woodlands. Remember, lifespan: about twenty three to twenty five years in wild and thirty to forty years in captivity. ठीक है? Captivity मतलब कि इनको zoo uh, uh, मतलब कैप्टिव वे में रखते हैं है ना जेल या हुआ या पिंजरा हुआ ऐसा कुछ बड़े ऐसे कैप्टिव एरिया में रखते हैं एंड उनका जो लाइफ स्पेन है दैट इज अबाउट 25 फाइव ईयर्स इन वाइल्ड एंड 40 ईयर्स इन कैप्टिविटी थ्रेट क्या क्या है हंटिंग हैबिटेट डिस्ट्रक्शन व्हाट इज द कंजर्वेशन स्टेटस वलनरेबल रिमेंबर कंजर्वेशन स्टेटस ही आपका इंपॉर्टेंट है सो टिल दिस पॉइंट आई होप एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर टू यू हम बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट स्पीशीज के बारे में पढ़ रहे हैं and this will be very helpful for you in your examination okay fine let us move ahead and see what is next next is that recently seven new species of spider have been discovered okay and we will be seeing what are those names but i don't think so that you will be able to memorize it because even i am also finding it difficulty but at least some idea we should be taking so the first one is afra flacilla don't remember the whole name afra flacilla basically it has been discovered from the thar desert of rajasthan and they belong to the family of jumping spider what is the features white fine hairs on black head and black horizontal lines on abdomen these spider stays among dry leaf blades clear next is your okay af afra flacilla is all in it's just like a what you can say prefix same prefix but you can understand the next name because all spiders are starting from this only afra flacilla curi chiadensis it was discovered from vinad kerala this also belongs to jumping spider category this was also jumping spider and this is also jumping spider characteristic red patches around the eyes and white hairs on the abdomen the bulged first pair of legs are also special living habitat moist deciduous forest of kurichiad okay next is your siampis siam spinops garoensis where they have been found in the garo hills of meghalaya okay and they belong to the family of flat spiders not jumping spiders okay they live in the surfaces of the rocks on the hills and their flat body is suitable that is why they belong to the flat category next is your philoponilla this has been discovered from kerala kottapara hills near kothamangalam the species lacks a venom gland and belongs to the family of feather legged spiders फेदर लेग्ड स्पाइडर्स मतलब कि हमको तीन कैटेगरी अभी तक तो पता चल गए हैं जंपिंग स्पाइडर्स फ्लैट स्पाइडर्स एंड फेदर लेग स्पाइडर्स नेक्स्ट इज योर ऑक्सीओक्स पीथम दिस हैज बीन डिस्कवर्ड फ्रॉम अगेन केरला यू कैन सी वेयर इट इज इट बिलोंग्स टू द फैमिली ऑफ स्पाइनी लेग स्पाइडर्स दैट इज योर नोन एज योर ऑक्सीपिडे येलोइश बॉडी होती है उनकी ठीक है लास्ट टू ऑक्सीओपोस Thambor muzensis. This has been discovered from Kerala. 
and they belongs to the family of spinelet again oxyopidae next your pseudomorgus tudhi this has been formed in the desert national park where is desert national park desert national park ek bar aapka question mein bhi aaya tha prelims question mein desert national park kahan hai it's in rajasthan okay rajasthan mein hai ye park you should know so basically these seven types of spiders we have discovered from mainly kerala and your rajasthan you should be knowing now categories of spider that is your flat flat body jumping spiny legged okay feather legged etc next is your indian bisons very important and these are the largest extent bovines okay and largest species of your wild cattle also okay habitat they are found in forested hills and grassy areas of south to southeast asia where they are distributed basically they have been distributed in thailand myanmar india okay burma is the other name of myanmar don't confuse yourself in india where they are found in the western ghats region south okay particularly vayanad nagarhol mudurmalai and bandipur all the four places are home to your this great indian bison the first ever population estimation exercise of this indian gaur was carried out in 2020 february and in that estimation we came to know that there are just 2000 left okay there are just 2000 left the gaur is the state animal of goa and bihar very very important fact for your prelims examination which is the state animal of goa and bihar gaur clear okay next is your koalas koalas scientific name you can see no need to remember it they belong to the family and they are the only member of the family fasco lartide okay they are endemic to australia australia mein endemic hai ye they are also found in the eucalyptus forest of eastern australia basically southeast australia mein ye zyada aapko dekhne ko milenge what is the main food for them eucalyptus tree for both habitat and food okay characteristics they are tree climbing animals you can see the photo it's a marsupial animal marsupial animal kya hota hai jisme pouches hote hain jaise kangaroos okay for the development of offspring apne bachcho ko rakhne ke liye unke paas ek pouch hota hai jaise kangaroo ka example hai waise hi koalas basically they don't drink much water as they get most of their moisture from the tree leaves only to unko water intake ka utna necessity nahi hai iucn status endangered clear they belong to the endangered category of iucn status next new catfish species let us let us understand basically new catfish catfish species has been found named as panga sius ikaria and who has named it icar indian council of agricultural research they have been found in gangetic plain but not in the peninsular india gangetic plain they have been found clear they are different from the other species of genus pangasius ye jo aapka genus pangasius hai usse alag type ke ye cat cash catfish species hain this species is edible which can be eaten out and the locals call it a keluthian tamil okay a keluthian tamil this catfish has high commercial value in aquaculture and wild capture fisheries understood okay next is your broad billed sand piper you can see the photo it's a migratory bird species sand piper generally people get confused with the snakes no this is your migratory bird where they are found they are found in the northern europe and in the nordic countries specifically just such as norway sweden finland and in siberia clear okay iucn status least concerned you can see iucn status is very important for each and every species to aap log ek chart bana lijiye jahan pe aap log critically endangered endangered vulnerable 
नियर थ्रेटेंड ऐसे करके आप बनाइए और उसके नीचे जितने भी स्पीशी आ रहे हैं उसको स्टिक कर लीजिए बॉल पे द बर्ड स्पेंड इट्स नॉन ब्रीडिंग सीजन फोरेजिंग ऑन इंसेक्ट एंड क्रिस्टेशियन इन द शैलो वॉटर्स एंड मट फ्लैट mostly in the coastal belt of eastern part of africa south asia and southeast asia it is talking about the food material on which they feed next is your dugong conservation reserve dugongs are very much in news they are also known as sea cows why sea cows because they eat grasses sea grasses cow eat grasses and this animal also eat grasses in the sea in the shallow coastal waters of indian and western pacific ocean remember it basically they are herbivorous mammal species that is why sea cow we have we are saying it clear the, they are cousins of manids they are also a type of animal but unlike manids which use fresh water area the dugong is strictly a marine mammal very important matlab little bit salt is being tolerable to the dugongs dugongs don't live in fresh water they live in marine water conservation status vulnerable appendix 1 and schedule 1 remember it see how it looks clear next is your whale shark whale shark campaign is being run that is why whale shark is in news this campaign runs across the coastal karnataka kerala lakshadweep islands and in the collaboration with forest and fisheries department of karnataka kerala and lakshadweep administration why for what reason this campaign is being run to reduce the accidental entanglements in fishing nets with fishermen release whale sharks basically what is happening fishermen are putting a very big net and in that net this whale shark is also getting entangled which is very harmful to both for this whale shark also and for fishermen also that is why this campaign is being run a mobile application has also been launched what will it keep that will keep a record of whale shark spotting and rescues for further conservation theek hai whale shark ke bare mein pad lete hain it is largest fish on the earth whale shark and it's a keystone species in marine ecosystem keystone species what are keystone species i hope you must have learned in the your uh, environment syllabus basically keystone species aise species hote hain jinki wajah se dusre species ko bhi bahut zyada fayda hai okay inke presence is affecting other organism also and their absence is also affecting other organism also in a large number okay they are ovoviviparous what is what is ovoviviparous basically this means that they are giving birth to the live young rather than lay eggs and reach the maturity around the 10 years old clear basically ye birth live younger birth ko nahi dete ye are दे यंगर बर्थ को देते हैं ना कि एग को देते हैं एग को नहीं देते हैं मीन्स दे आर नॉट लेइंग एग्स दे आर डायरेक्टली प्रोड्यूसिंग द यंग वन हैबिटेड ओशन ड्वेलर्स दैट फीड ऑन फिश स्क्विड एंड अदर क्रिएचर्स इंडिया में कहाँ है ऑल अलोंग सी को इंडियन कोस्ट वी कैन सी ऑल अलोंग मतलब कि पूरा आपका इंडियन कोस्ट जितना भी है उधर आपको वेल शार्क देखने को मिलेंगे बट जनरली आपको गुजरात एरिया में ज्यादा देखने को मिलेगा ओके अलोंग द गुजरात कोस्ट प्रोटेक्शन स्टेटस स्केड्यूल वन एंडेंजर्ड एंड आई यू सी एन ग्रीन स्टेटस असेसमेंट एक नया टाइप का असेसमेंट है ये लार्जली डिप्लीटेड ओके लार्जली डिप्लीटेड ओके ओके नेक्स्ट इज योर पैसिफिक ब्लू फिन ट्यूना इट इज ऑल्सो ए फिश यू वी कैन सी इट हाउ दे वॉट इज द अपियरेंस they have a black or dark blue dorsal sides with grayish green iridescence scientific name aap yaad kar sakte ho thunus thynus okay thunus thynus their bellies are dotted with silver or gray spots or bands okay they are having small yellow fins edged in black running from the second dorsal fin to ye sab aap 
चाहो तो याद कर सकते हो क्या फीचर्स है एक्सेट्रा अदरवाइज यू कैन लीव इट वॉट दे ईट बेसिकली दे ईट स्क्विड फिश ओके दे आर दे आर फूड हैबिटेट वेर इज हैबिटेट यूएस कैच ऑफ पैसिफिन ब्लू फिन ओके एंड कैलिफोर्निया कोस्ट ये जो दो एरिया है वो मेन हैबिटेट एरिया है ग्रेट इंडियन बस्टर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर फाउंड इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट एंड इट्स ए फ्लैग फ्लैगशिप ग्रासलैंड स्पीशीज सॉरी फॉर माई अटरिंग फ्लैगशिप ग्रासलैंड स्पीशीज है ये ठीक है ऑफ इंडिया फ्लैगशिप स्पीशी क्या होते हैं जो एक इको सिस्टम को आइकन होते हैं दे आर आइकन ऑफ द इको सिस्टम लाइक लायन ओके दे आर आइकन ऑफ द इको सिस्टम बेसिकली वो इको सिस्टम उन्हीं के नाम से जाना जाता है ओके इट इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट फ्लाइंग बर्ड्स इन द वर्ल्ड एंड इंडिया हैवीएस्ट फ्लाइंग बर्ड ग्रेट इंडियन बस्टर्ड एंड क्वेश्चन हैज ऑल्सो बीन आज इन द प्रिलिम्स आई थिंक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में कि ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन में आई एम can getting confused what are the characteristics they are having black crown on the forehead contrasting with pale neck and head body jo hai brownish color ki hai we can see okay male jo hai wo zyada weight ke hote as compared to the female diet kya hai they feed on the grass seed grasshoppers beetles rodents reptiles okay distribution About 115 Rajasthan and the 150 is the 95 percent of the total world population. मतलब कि अगर आप देखो तो 95 percent population कहाँ है Rajasthan में ही है. And Rajasthan में in the Jaisalmer district of Rajasthan, including the desert national park, which is the natural habitat. Natural habitat क्या है Great Indian Bustard का? Desert national park. Clear. Next is your grasslands of Kutch in Gujarat is second largest. Habitat. Other regions such as Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, it is the state bird of Rajasthan. Remember, breeding seasons from March to October. Captive breeding kiya jata hai in the desert national park. Okay, by a project named as Dehradun Based Wildlife Institute in two thousand and nineteen. Captive breeding isle kiya jata hai taaki hum species ko protect kar sake. and basically under that dnp 24 gib chicks are being reared theek hai 24 great indian bustard ke chicks jo hai unko pala ja raha hai in the desert national park by a team supported by international fund for hobara conservation of uae conservation status remember it schedule 1 appendix 1 and critically endangered isliye itna sab kuch kiya ja raha hai inke liye theek hai species recovery program this gib is also under the species recovery program and this program is under integrated development of wildlife habitats of ministry of environment forest and climate change understood okay let us move ahead and see what is next topic coming us for us is your cheetahs okay basically cheetah other name is Asinox jubatus. It is a scientific name, and it is one of the oldest of the big cat species. Okay, with ancestors that can be traced back more than five million years, one million, ten lakh, five million, fifty lakh years to the Miocene era. Cheetah is also the world's fastest land mammal that lives in Africa and Asia. Remember it. Okay. Basically, there are two types. African and Asiatic. I have put the difference also. What are the characteristic difference? Basically, African cheetah are having slightly brownish color with golden skin and thicker skin than Asiatic one. Asiatic are smaller than African. Okay. More spots are there in African, and this Asiatic cheetahs are having pale yellowish color. Distribution we can see. Africa, all over African. That is why African cheetah. And if we talk about Asiatic, found only in Iran. Remember it. And less than hundred individuals are left. So if this condition is there, obviously they will be critically endangered species. <laughs> Appendix one is Schedule two, and this African cheetah is least vulnerable. 
sorry least uh, not least vulnerable appendix 1 and schedule 2 clear two categories i have mentioned here next is your sarus crane very important it's a large non migratory crane non migratory then don't migrate habitat they are found in south asia okay southeast asia woodland grassland okay australia and sarus crane are the tallest flying bird in the world tallest flying bird okay and it is different from different from other bird because of their gray color and their contrasting red hat and upper this you can see red color this makes them different from the other cranes clear conservation status in the schedule 4 of wildlife protection act schedule 4 clear i hope that you know what are schedule 1 2 3 4 5 now what has been done earlier there were in wpa earlier there were six schedules now this has been changed to four the recent current affair i am telling you okay four have been done iucn mein kaha aate hain they belong to the vulnerable category what is the threat habitat loss and degradation due to draining draining of the wetland clear next is your spotted deer you can see the picture spots are there that is why spotted deer it is also known as axis deer or cheetal and it is the most common deer species in indian forest grasslands mein rehte hain and forest in india and sri lanka the deer's golden rufous coloring is speckled by white spot you can see white spot okay and they primarily eat grasses vegetation but also they eat your shed antlers also clear state animal of telangana very important point spotted deer is the state animal of telangana and in the iucn they are found in least concern category next your purple frog so different type of frog we came to see about it scientific name you can go through it it is also known as indian purple frog of pignos frog okay they belong to the family of genus naski baratus discovery it was first discovered in 2003 in the eduki district of kerala okay it is not new it has already been discovered in 2003 distribution they are endemic to western ghats and limited mainly to kerala and some parts of the tamil nadu basically if we see the india map kerala and tamil nadu they are endemic to this region only clear okay features what are the features basically their body appears robust and bloated dekh ke lag raha hai na phule hue hain hai na dekh ke bloated lag raha hai bloated ka matlab thoda phul jana aisa and they are relatively round as compared to other flat frogs they are having small head and unusual pointed snout unusual pointed snout ye aap dekh rahe ho inka snout alag se nikla hua pointed hai wahi hai adults are dark purplish gray in color they lives in underground tunnels okay comes out to the surface for a single day in a year to breed bas ek din ke liye bahar aate hain iucn mein endangered category okay next is your himalayan griffon vultures scientific name gyps himalayanensis it's a rare and largest bird native to the himalayas large native to the himalayas okay also in the tibetan plateau we can see kahan kon kon se countries hai jahan pe milte hain you can go through it china kazakhstan uzbekistan kyrgyzstan tajikistan afghanistan pakistan india nepal bhutan china mongolia these are all the places they live clear more about it let us see more about it description they are huge vulture and the adult is sandy brown with a pale fearless featherless head clear usually they are seen either single or in groups okay iucn near threatened iucn mein near threatened hai himalayan griffon vulture next is your indian pangolin very important basically indian pangolins are having 36 ka aankda with snakes you must be knowing it okay they are enemy snake and they are 
they belong to folidota and they have a large protective keratin scales covering their skin aap scales dekh rahe ho inke ye bahut hi unique feature hai inka the scales help them to protect from the enemies okay and they are only and mammals jo inke aise type ke scales dekhne ko milenge diet what do they eat insects okay and termites and pangolins are nocturnal i have already told you what is nocturnal the ones who are active in night okay fine next is your spot billed pelican spot billed pelican ka ek unique feature hai inka jo beak hai wo bahut hi इनको डिस्टिंग्विश करता है दूसरे दूसरे स्पीशीज से क्लियर दे आर बिलोंग टू द मेंबर ऑफ पेलिकन फैमिली दे ब्रीड इन साउथ सदर्न एशिया फ्रॉम सदर्न ईरान टू इंडिया ईस्ट एंड इंडोनेशिया ओके दे आर फाउंड इन योर कोस्टल वाटर्स लार्ज इनलैंड एंड लार्ज लेक्स ऑल्सो ब्रीडिंग इज लिमिटेड टू इंडिया श्रीलंका एंड कैम्बोडिया क्लियर आई सी एन स्टेटस नियर थ्रेटेंड Wildlife Protection Act Schedule Four: Hunting is prohibited, but the but the penalty is less. You must be knowing what is Schedule Four in the WPA Act. Threats are written here. You can go through it. The PDF will be provided with provided to you in the description box below. Clear? Next, your Indian Grey Hornbill. By photo, her one. पीपी का फोटो देखते हुए आप चलेंगे तो आपको और इंटरेस्टिंग लगेगा इंडियन ग्रे हॉर्नबिल बेसिकली दे आर फाउंड ओनली इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट दैट इज वाई नेम्ड एज इंडियन ग्रे हॉर्नबिल दे आर मीडियम साइज हॉर्नबिल विथ ए ब्राउनिश ग्रे बॉडी वॉट डू दे ईट दे ईट फ्रूट्स बेरीज इंसेक्ट्स रेप्टाइल्स एक्सेट्रा आई यू सी एन स्टेटस इज लीस्ट कंसर्न रिमेंबर इट ओके लीस्ट कंसर्न दे आर arboreal they lives on the tree spend most of the time on the tree threads cutting down of the tree will be the thread because they are arboreal clear so with this fact you can understand the indian grey hornbill next is your northern river terrapin very important again this is a riverine turtle native to southeast asia okay and it is the one of the asia's largest freshwater and breakwater turtle where they are found they are found in bangladesh india cambodia indonesia malaysia and this is regionally extinct in myanmar singapore thailand and vietnam remember it they come they spend most of the time in water come to the ground to lay eggs clear you should be knowing what type of diet omnivorous diet they used to take protection status they are critically endangered Appendix one and schedule one. See all the species we are coming through, which are critically endangered. Unko to aap diary me likhi lijiye, okay? Because they are very important for your upcoming prelims examination. Next is your Amazon rainforest. We can see Amazon rainforest in the South America. Or South America me sixty percent Brazil me hai. Then at Peru and Colombia ten percent. and minor amounts if we see to venezuela ecuador bolivia guiana suriname and french guiana so largest part of this forest belongs to brazil basically it is home to 30% of the world species comprising 40000 plant species 60000 tree species 1300 birds and more than 430 species of animals that is why they are very extremely important for the earth clear okay next is your indian wolf we will be learning about indian wolf okay okay so let us learn about your indian wolf and see what is it basically it is a sub species of your grey wolf okay the photo is here greyish in color you can see it is one of the common large carnivores found in scrub grasslands and agro pastoral regions of semi arid in india the concentration of population can be seen in mp rajasthan gujarat maharashtra chatisgarh okay what are the threats threats are hunting encroachment land conversion growing man animal conflict okay you need to know about this what is the conservation status least concern appendix 1 and schedule 1 remember this least concern one 
okay indian wolf next is your rough tooth dolphin rough tooth dolphin you can see how uh, the tooth has been of the dolphin you can see here it is very rough okay this in this shape very dangerous these are found in tropical and warm temperate waters all over the world okay but little is known about them see prelims mein question aa sakta hai ki they are found in all over the world top tropical and temperate to aap log extreme extreme statement bol ke isko eliminate nahi kariyega actually they are found all over the world in the tropical and temperate waters they are having a gray body length is 8.5 ft and they are having white lips throat and speckled belly conservation status least concerned in appendix 2 clear okay next very important gangetic river dolphin as the name is saying gangetic dolphin will be present in the ganga river it is a fresh water aquatic animal remember fresh water okay they are blind and navigate by emitting ultrasonic sounds it is one of the south asian river dolphins and their other being indus river dolphin indus river dolphin ka iucn status kya hai endangered and this ganga river dolphin is found in ganga and brahmaputra river having their tributaries in india bangladesh and nepal as well clear this has been recognized by government of india as national aquatic animal of india in 2009 very important fact clear next bihar accounts for 50% of the world river dolphin population bihar the state bihar why it is significant what is the significance of your dolphin because it is at the top of the food chain and it is indicator of the health of the river ecosystem it says that if the dolphins are healthy which means that the water ecosystem is also healthy this gangetic river dolphin is endangered okay remember it however uh, and also indus river dolphin is also endangered schedule 1 what are some of the conservation efforts done for conserving our gangetic dolphin basically national dolphin research center is being built at patna okay and uh, vikramshila gangetic dolphin sanctuary is also there it is in bihar because bihar is having the world's 50% of the population clear dolphin observatory is also there which bihar government is setting up and this will be the first observatory for the mammals in in the bhagalpur district clear you can understand it next project dolphin is also very important to conserve the dolphin project dolphin is also established in 2019 okay that meeting was held by your uh, prime minister in the national ganga council under the national ganga council clear it is one of the activities planned under earth ganga earth ganga refers to the conservation of your ganga river clear which has been came in 2019 and this will be in the line of project tiger as in the project tiger is aiming to increase the population of tiger dolphin project dolphin is aiming to increase the population of dolphin this is expected to be implemented by ministry of environment forest and climate change remember project dolphin next a special conservation program also need to be taken so that people are also engaged here basically indicator species hai jo aapki gangetic river dolphin hai that is a indicator species that is indicating the health of the ecosystem as i have already told you that it is present in the top of the food chain okay so if top is healthy which means that the lower part is also healthy clear fine moving ahead let us see what is next himalayan yak basically they belong to the genus boss and are therefore related to cattle clear they are they came from wild yak they are coming from the wild yak their ancestors are wild yak and yak is basically found in all over the himalayan regions such as your arunachal pradesh sikkim northern bengal etc and it is also found in mongolia and russia you can see the picture also himalayan yak next is your indian gaur i have already discussed about it let us see because it is in news so this can be a potential concept basically it is largest extent bovines i have already told you 
okay and habitat are forested hills grassy areas of south and south southeast asia distribution you can see the countries written here india china thailand malaysia etc and in india basically western ghats are having more talking about in western ghats vayanad ragnagar hole mudumalai and bandipur complex and the gaur is state animal of goa and bihar this i have we have already talked about it vulnerable and schedule one are the protection status threats are habitat loss poaching for meat and human animal conflict clear okay next is your asiatic wild dog okay they are also called as red dog or whistling dog they are uh, in the size of your german shepherd you can see but look are more than long legged fox you can see the legs are very long it asiatic wild dog they are carnivorous animals and they are members of the family of canidae or class mammalia habitats we can see across central asia russia south asia southeast asia clear fine basically if we talk about the research which had been done by the uh, geographers what they say that they are restricted to the south and southeast asia with northern most populations in china clear if we talk about particularly in india they are found in western and eastern ghats and also in central indian landscape such as your middle areas of india and your northeast india clear you can see the photo of asiatic wild dog as well conservation what has been done basically states have performing very well in conserving the wild dogs such as karnataka and maharashtra madhya pradesh they have been ranked very high in conserving them okay and uh, talking about the protection status they are endangered appendix 2 and schedule 2 threats you can see predation habitat loss etc is the common threat next is your black coral you can see here the photo as well the black color coral let us see basically they are also known as anti patharians or thorn corals you can see the thorns are coming here thorns are there and they are an order of soft deep water corals corals are of two types hard and soft as the name suggest black so they are recognized by their jet black or down black color they are surrounded by the polyps i hope that you know the symbiotic relationship of corals and zooxanthellae both are in the symbiotic relationship helping each other to live okay habitat you can see the shallow water should be there why shallow water because they need sunlight for the existence clear features what are features they can reproduce in both ways throughout the life line okay many of the black corals are branched and look like feathers bushed while other are straight like a whip different types of looks are being described here basically as i have told you that corals rely on the sun for the photosynthesis black corals are filter feeders and they eat tiny zooplankton we can understand it okay uses what are the uses basically for medical treatment and rituals they have been using also for medic ma making the jewelry also significance what are the significance basically they act as a good habitat for the fish and invertebrates okay where fish and invertebrates use the corals to hide from the predators chup jate hain wo theek hai agar aap log photo ko dekhe to ye chup jate hain fishes aur baki organisms apne predators se concerns kya hai actually they are declining in the number because of the poaching ocean acidification or climate change ki wajah se unka ecosystem disturb ho raha hai jis wajah se they are in the edge of decline clear fine next is your muli bamboo very interesting let us see what is it basically it's a tropical evergreen species of bamboo it is the largest fruit producing bamboo and it is native to the northeast india myanmar region remember this point it accounts for 90% of the bamboo forest in northeastern state clear and they can be easily recognized by diffused clump habit the plant is also grown as an ornamental ornament ki tarah bhi isko grow kiya jata hai motam is a strange ecological phenomena associated with muli bamboo that occurs every once in 48 years remember it clear this is a very important fact you can see the picture of muli bamboo as well next is your senna 
spectabilis it is also very important basically this species has been introduced in india as an ornamental species and for the use of firewood as a firewood hum isko use kar sakte hain and this has been bought introduced from south and central america clear basically this plant has become an invasive alien species in parts of africa india and other country invasive ka matlab kya hota hai जो बाहर से लाए गए रहते हैं ठीक है दे आर इन्वेडर्स अंडरस्टूड ओके बेसिकली द थिक फॉलियाज ऑफ द ट्री अर इज द ग्रोथ ऑफ आप लोग देख सकते हैं जो सेना स्पेक्टेबिलिस है इसके ग्रोथ से क्या होता है बिकॉज ऑफ देयर ग्रोथ अदर प्लांट ग्रोथ आर रिटार्डेड ये दूसरे प्लांट के ग्रोथ को रोक देते हैं क्योंकि ये खुद बहुत ज्यादा फैल जाते हैं तो दूसरों को जगह नहीं मिलते हैं सो दैट इज वाई other trees and grasses are not able to grow properly it causes food shortages for wildlife population especially herbivores so plant grow nahi ho raha hai to there will be shortage of food and hence they are also affecting the germination and growth of native species ye bahar ka aake apna pura fail ja raha hai aur apne jo native species hain they unko grow hone ke liye nahi de raha hai this is all about it clear okay next is your neel kurunji flowers very important basically these are shrub of anthaceae family and famously blooms every 12 years 12 saal mein ek bar bloom hota hai very important fact for prelims endemic to western ghats covering kerala karnataka tamil nadu their scientific name don't remember okay these are genus of three they are having 350 species inke jo ancestor hai 350 species se hain clear the topi the topli carvi the carvi and the kurinji all belong to the genus this strobi lanthus genus theek hai basically aapko ye wala fact yaad rakhna hai aur ye fact yaad rakhna for the prelims examination endemic to western ghats and these are shrubs and they blooms every once every 12 years clear you can see the neel kurinji it is bluish in color that is why neel has been given name basically it is found in western ghats i have already told you and the carvi grows on the steepest cliff where tree cannot grow okay basically the other species which comes under the family of your uh, neel karanji it is talking about that you can refer it moving ahead red sanders you can see here basically what is red sanders india it is an indian endemic tree species with restricted geographical range in eastern ghats इनका जो जोग्राफिकल रेंज है वो ईस्टर्न घाट्स में ही कॉन्फाइंड है ठीक है ईस्टर्न घाट्स आर इरेगुलर जोन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड वेस्टर्न घाट्स आर कंटिन्यूस लेकिन ईस्टर्न घाट्स में ब्रेक है क्लियर फाइन स्पीशीज इज एंडमिक टू डिस्टिंग फॉरेस्ट ऑल्सो इन आंध्र प्रदेश ओके तमिलनाडु कर्नाटका ऑल्सो दे आर वॉट आर रेड सैंडर्स दे आर एंडेमिक ट्री इट इज ए ट्री they grow in rocky degraded and fallow lands with wet soil and hot and dry climate the protection status you can learn endangered appendix 2 and schedule 2 very important part clear red sanders what are the uses basically why we are protecting it basically it is used for the medicinal value the therapeutic pro properties is in very high demand such as your medicinal and cosmetic clear they are used to make furnitures which furniture very good quality furnitures which is being sold in the international market also clear and you can understand that how much good quality are having that one ton of red sanders is costing around 1 crore in the international market so good amount from red sanders what are the threats basically smuggling forest fire cattle grazing other threats and this initiative has been done operation rakth chandan rakth is blood and chandan is sandalwood the red sanders it is given name and the directorate of revenue intelligence the dri has recovered 14.63 metric tons of red sanders under the operation rakth chandan this operation is very important please remember it it is related to the red sanders next is your durgavati tiger reserve okay basically durgavati tiger reserve is a tiger reserve which will spread across narsinghpur damoh and sagar district clear 
and this one fourth of PTR will get submerged due to the linking of Kane Bethwa rivers. Clear? Basically, it is saying that this tiger reserve is having a threat of getting uh, submergence because of the river interlinking project of Kane and Bethwa. Clear? Basically, for this, NTCA has asked Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh government to notify the tiger reserves. And this tiger reserve is spread across Narsingpur, Damo and Sagar district. Clear? Understood? This is this Durgavati tiger reserve. I have already told you. You can see here. Okay. Fine. Fine. This is in Madhya Pradesh. I have already told you it is in Madhya Pradesh. The one fourth of PTR which refers to Panna Tiger Reserve. PTR is your Panna Tiger Reserve. What is saying that Panna Tiger Reserve ka one fourth part submerge ho sakta hai water mein because of the linking of Kane and Betwa. Okay? You should remember it. Other tiger reserves which Madhya Pradesh mein hai, wo Kanha, Bandavgarh, Panna, Panj, Satpura and Sanjay Dubri. Very important. Samaj mein aa gaya? Clear? Okay. Let us move ahead and see what is next. Kaveri South Wildlife Sanctuary. Basically, this is in Tamil Nadu. And remember the district, this is spread across reserve forest of Krishnagiri and Dharmpuri district. Two district you need to remember. Clear? Also, this wildlife sanctuary adjoins your Kaveri North Wildlife Sanctuary Tamil Nadu and your Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary in Karnataka. Clear? Yeah. Basically, the declared landscape lends continuity to the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve to two tiger Bola ja raha hai ki jo Kaveri South Wildlife Sanctuary hai, CSWS, that is linking Nilgiri, thik hai, Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve ko link kar raha hai, do, uh, three protected areas se ke through, thik hai, three protected areas ke through, NBR ko link kar raha hai, wo three protected areas likhe hoi hai, Mahadeshwara Wild Cell Life Sanctuary, BRT Wildlife Sanctuary and Sathimangalam Tiger Reserve, clear? Understood? I hope till this point everything is clear to you. Okay. Let us move ahead and what is next? Yeah. About the legal provision, the state government has notified under uh, this century under WPA Act. What is importance is your biodiversity. It is covering around 35 species of mammals and 238 species of birds. Important fauna, you can see leaves, soft shell, turtles, smooth coated otters, marsh crocodiles, grizzled, grizzled giant squirrel, etc. These are the important things. Clear? It is also important for the Kaveri River Basin species. Elephant habitats bhi hai, isme two elephant corridors bhi hai, ye Kaveri Basin Wildlife Sanctuary mein, the Nandi Mangalam Ulibanda and Kovili Pallam Ani Bedala Hala. Okay? Ye do aapko yaad rakhne. Next is your Ranipur Wildlife Sanctuary. It is also very important. Basically, this sanctuary was found in 1977. Okay. And has no resident tiger. However, it is important. Corridor hai gate tara se important for the movement of tigers. Okay. You should know it. Basically, this sanctuary will be the fourth in Uttar Pradesh. And this is also the first in Bundelkhand region of the state. Bundelkhand ka pehla aur Uttar Pradesh ka chotha. Clear? What are the flora, flora you here found? You can see bamboo, palash, khair, mahua, etc. Fauna also you can understand it. Ab maine yaha pe bola ki ye Uttar Pradesh ka fourth hai. To baaki teen kaun se wildlife or ya protected areas hai? That is your Dudhua National Park, Pilibhi Tiger Reserve and Amangar Tiger Reserve. Clear? In, understood? Fine. Next is your Hastinapur Wildlife Sanctuary, which is present in the Uttar Pradesh. Spread across how many areas? Merit, Gaiziabad, Bijnor, and Jyotiba Nagar district. Four district. Clear? This sanctuary has been declared as sanctuary in 1986. Clear? And it is having a very good 
लैंडफॉर्म्स फ्लोरा फोना एंड इट्स अ मिक्सचर ऑफ हैबिटेट्स आल्सो वेटलैंड्स भी हैं मार्शेस भी हैं ड्राई सैंड भी है और जेंटली स्लोप स्लोपिंग रिवाइंस भी है ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट है ओके इट्स अ मिक्सड अप डिफरेंट हैबिटेट्स क्लियर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड कॉर्बेट टाइगर रिजर्व वेयर इट इज उत्तराखंड नैनीताल डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड इट इज द फर्स्ट नेशनल पार्क ऑफ इंडिया कॉर्बेट टाइगर रिजर्व दिस प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर वॉज लॉन्च इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी थ्री and this was the first national park corbett tiger reserve the core area forms the corbett national park while the buffer contains reserve forest as well as sonanandi wildlife sanctuary basically ye jo tiger reserve hai tiger reserve ka core area bhi hota hai core buffer hota hai aap log environment mein you must have learned about it core area basically it forms the corbett national park and your the buffer area contains reserve forest reserve forest bhi hai yahan pe and as well as your sonanandi wildlife sanctuary bhi hai clear rivers important hai what are the rivers flowing through this tiger reserve sonanandi mandal palan kosi bhi hai clear home to 230 tigers and it is having a world highest tiger density sabse zyada world ka clear fine flora you can understand there are huge amount of flora you can see here it is written fauna also apart from tiger leopards bhi hain jungle cats barking deer spotted deer sambar deer etc other important protected area of uttarakhand you should also know apart from your corbett that is your nanda devi valley of flowers valley of flowers national park and nanda devi together both are unesco world heritage site and your rajaji national park gangotri national park govind national park clear you should know about it next is your agastiyar malai elephant reserve which is in tamil nadu and this will be the fifth elephant reserve in the state of tamil nadu and up after this elephant reserve the total elephant reserve in india became 32 remember this clear understood fine the recent one you should be knowing that is your agastiyar malai next is your dandeli elephant in karnatak singpan elephant reserve in nagaland and lemuru elephant reserve in chatisgarh ye teen aur ye char char naam aapko yaad rakhne hai clear okay let us move ahead with some other thing that is your rangnath hithu bird sanctuary it is also known as pakshi kashi of the karnatak clear and it is situated in the shrirangapatna of mandya district of karnataka it is in karnataka rangathittu bird sanctuary which is on the island of river kaveri and it is also example of riverine ecosystem aisa jo river pe dependent hai <laughs> apart from bird sanctuary apart from your riverine ecosystem it is also important bird area and it is also identified by bird international and bombay natural history society This has been declared sanctuary even before the independence of India. That is in 1940 itself by the famous or ornithologist of Dr. Salim Ali. Clear? Climate basically you can understand very pleasant climate. No extremity is there. Ple pleasant temperature is there. In June, when the southwestern monsoon peaks throughout the Karnataka state, heavy to heavy rainfall also happens. Okay, and this has been understood. what is the significance basically it supports more than 1% of the world's population of spot billed pelicans clear very important spot billed pelicans it also supports high population of painted storks and magar crocodiles apart from that it is also having six islands surrounding them would and that will become the part of ramsar site also clear okay next park is protected area is bhitar kanika national park basically it's the second largest mangrove forest in india second largest mangrove forest second largest now you need to find which is the first one sundarbans clear and second is your bhitar kanika and this has been designated as national park in the year of 1988 this is present in the odisha Okay, and it is located in the estuary of 
ब्रह्मनी बैतरनी धर्म एंड महानदी रिवर सिस्टम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट फॉर प्रिलिम्स The answer below. Next topic is Kibulimja National Park, the floating national park in the world. It is only the floating national park which is in Manipur, and it is located in the Loktak Lake. Okay, and with this Loktak Lake is home to the Sangai. Sangai. Okay, this is deer, the dancing deer of Manipur. This is also this national park is also the last natural habitat of. bro antlered deer sangai <laughs> understood so this is your world's only floating national park which is situated in the manipur kis mein float ho raha hai loktak lake mein float ho raha hai you need to remember home to sangai deer very important other thing hog deer is also found otter is also found and other waterfalls are also found here नेक्स्ट इज योर डेजर्ट नेशनल पार्क इन इसके ऊपर तो आपका क्वेश्चन भी आ चुका है प्रीलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन में दैट इट इज प्रेजेंट इन टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट जैसलमर एंड बारमर इन राजस्थान डेजर्ट से ही आप राजस्थान यू कैन क्लू इट इट इज एन एक्सेलेंट एग्जांपल ऑफ डेजर्ट इको क्लियर एंड इट इज द ओनली प्लेस वेयर राजस्थान की जो स्टेट बर्ड है जिप जिसके बारे में हमने पढ़ा था एंड द स्टेट एनिमल Chinkara and the state tree Khejri and the state flower Rohida are found naturally. So beautiful fact to learn about. All the four important state ke icons, bird, animal, tree and flower are found here naturally or naturally artificially. Nahin. Clear? You can understand other mammals which are animals which are found. It is written here. You can see here. Griffin vulture, eagle, saker, flacon. Ye sab winters me a jaate hain idhar. okay basically they are also having fossils of animals and plants of 180 million years ago and they are also having sand dunes jagged rocks bottom or etc and 1980 mein isko unesco world heritage site ka bhi designation diya gaya tha aur 1992 mein this became the national park as well okay next is your orang national park which is present in assam in the river on the river of your Located on the northern bank of Brahmaputra River, okay, understand it. It is designated as sanctuary in 1985 and national park in 1999. Dono hai wildlife sanctuary bhi hai, national park bhi hai. Ye isko it is also known as mini Kazi Ranga because they both Kazi Ranga and Orang are having similar type of landscape, okay, having very rich flora and fauna, and it's a very good protected area. next your periyar tiger reserve which is in kerala which kerala ka kaun se part mein hai thekaddi okay basically it is in the uh, located in the region of tamil nadu and kerala understood okay basically this tiger reserve has been declared as wildlife sanctuary in 1950 and tiger reserve in 1978 basically aap logo ko ye dates yaad करने में बहुत मुश्किल होगी बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी नेशनल पार्क एंड प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया जस्ट नो दैट वॉट ऑल थिंग्स आर डेजिग्नेटेड क्या वो सेंचुरी है क्या वो बस नेशनल पार्क है ये आपको एटलीस्ट ये तो आपको पता होना चाहिए टू मेजर रिवर ड्रेन दिस एरिया पेरियार एंड पंबा ऑल्सो मुल्ला पेरियार डैम इज लोकेटेड ऑन पेरियार टाइगर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मुल्ला पेरियार डैम क्लियर ओके Vegetation you can see here. Vegetation is very diverse. Tropical evergreen is also there. Semi evergreen is also there. Moist deciduous is also there. Fringe evergreen is also there. Grasslands and eucalyptus. This is also very important. Apart from tiger, elephant is also present. And apart from elephant, all these animals which are written here also present. What are the important tribes? It is very very important. Palians, Mannans. मलयारंस 
Mallapandrams, Puralis and Uldans. These are all the tribes of yeah, Periyar Tiger Reserve. Clear? Next is your Khijadiya Wildlife Sanctuary and Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary. Basically, they have been observed and have been uh, the wetland day. If we talk about the wetland, what is wetland? Transitional zone between your terrestrial and aquatic system. So, World Wetland Day is observed every year on February 2. Why we are observing? See, any type of day if we are celebrating, the main motto is to create the awareness among community. Clear? Yeah? And on this day only, 2nd February 1971, what has happened? Convention on Wetland was signed, which promised to, which promised to protect and conserve the wetlands all across the world. Clear? Yeah? Okay. This 2022 theme was Wetlands Action for People and Nature. Let us learn about Khijadiya Bird Century. This is located in Gujarat. It is freshwater wetland located in near the coast of Gulf of Kutch. The words I am underlining is very important for your upcoming prelims examination. It is formed by creation of a dike. It's a geographical phenomenon. By the then ruler of erstwhile princely state of Navnagar to protect farmland from Bata Rai ki kaise ye form hua tha. This is also very important that this Khijadiya Wildlife sen Bird Sanctuary is also part of Marine National Park Jamnagar, the first marine national park in the country. Very important. This is also part of Central Asian Flyway and it is home to endangered Palash fish, eagle, Indian skimmer. And common pochard. Okay, you should understand it. Supports more than 1% of your pelicans and 2% of your goose and 20% of common crane. This is Khijadiya word sanctuary in Gujarat. Next, Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary. This is also very important in Uttar Pradesh. You should know. It is also freshwater marsh and non forested marsh wetland that contains freshwater and is continuously flooded. Hamesha Pani Se Bhara Rata Hai. Established in 1980 and protected in the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. This is eco-sensitive zone. Remember it. Many important species are there apart from Saras. We have learned about Saras crane. Okay. You should know about it. National Wetland Decadal Change Atlas. Basically, this is your new initiative by that Preparation of Atlas is being done by Space Application Center, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Clear? Basically, it will mark the changes was what has happened in the wetlands across the country in past decade. Thus, saal mein wetlands ki kya stiti rahi hai, usko wo map karega. And it will help the state governments to plan for the conservation. Clear? Okay. Next is your Simlipal Biosphere Reserve. Where it is? It is in Odisha, in Mayur Bhanj district. Remember it. It lies in the eastern end of the Eastern Ghat. Okay, My Mayur Bhanj region. You can see here. What is the meaning of Simli? Basically, it has derived from the name Simul, which means silk cotton trees growing in that area. Remember, it is also part of Mayur Bhanj Elephant Reserve. And apart from this biosphere reserve, it is having Simlipal Tiger Reserve, Hadagard Wildlife Sanctuary and Kuldiha Wildlife Sanctuary. Three protected areas already in biosphere reserve. Mein hai. Flora, Sal jo hai dominant hai, apart from other things. Home to the Bengal Tiger also, Elephant, Asian Elephant, Gaur, Chosing. Okay, you should understand. Waterfalls, Juranda and Bare Pani. Okay, these type of falls are also there. Next, this park, Simlipal, has been declared Biosphere Reserve in 1994. And it is also a part of UNESCO World Network of Biosphere Reserve. You must be knowing about it. WNBR. Okay. Tribes, what are the important tribes? Erenga Kharias and Mankir Dias. These are the two main important tribes present in this area. You should remember. Other tribes are Ho, Gonda and Bunda. Clear? 
अपार्ट फ्रॉम सिमली पाल वॉट आर द प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज इन उड़ीसा यू शुड बी नोइंग भितरकनिका बदरम चिलिका हदगढ़ बसीपल्ली कोटागढ़ नंदनकनन लखारी एंड गहिर माथा गहिर माथा वी टॉक्ड अबाउट ऑल एंड ग्रिडली टर्टल आई होप यू रिमेंबर इट क्लियर ओके Moving ahead, let us learn what is about your tiger relocation. Tiger is being relocated. Why relocation is done? To so that we can increase the tiger population. Okay. Basically, it has been done by taking permission of NTCA, the nodal body for the administration of tigers, National Tiger Conservation Authority. This is a statutory body, which means that it has been, uh, it came into force by a law. under the wildlife protection act clear so basically this re relocation is being done from a very large populated to less populated so that increasing the uh, to increase the number of tiger clear basically this the first relocation of tiger happened in 2008 after they get disappeared in 2005 benefits to aap logo ko samjhane ki zarurat nahi hai obviously there are many benefits first benefits that it will increase the population of tiger next very important mangrove alliance for climate mac okay mangrove alliance for climate matlab ki we need to promote the growth of mangroves for climate theek hai for protecting our climate basically iska jo research center hoga that will be established in indonesia and that will conduct the study okay on the mangrove ecosystem how we can do that aim is to conserves restore mangrove ecosystem worldwide and to raise awareness also that why mangroves are important you can see what are mangroves these are two types of trees jinke jo roots hai wo pani mein hote hain aur ye important kyun hote hain because they are acting as a shelter agar yahan pe flood aata hai to inke roots ki wajah se inka strength ki wajah se jo flood hua cyclone hua etc jitne bhi aapke डिजास्टर्स हुए ये प्रोटेक्ट हो जाता है ये इसको आगे बढ़ने नहीं देता है तो इट्स लाइक इट एक्ट लाइक ए शेल्टर ओके फॉर द पीपल एंड फॉर द पीशीज ऑर्गेनिजम ऑल लिविंग इन दिस टाइप ऑफ एरियाज ओके दिस मैंग्रोव अलायंस फॉर क्लाइमेट में हेल्प कौन कौन कर रहा है पार्टनर्स कौन कौन है यूनाइटेड अरब इमरेट्स एंड इंडोनेशिया इंडिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया जापान स्पेन श्रीलंका इज ऑल्सो ज्वाइंट एज पार्टनर्स ओके अंडरस्टूड Next is your state of world's mangroves report 2022. Let us understand. Basically, if we talk about in India, it is seeing an increase of 17 square kilometer as compared to 2019. आपको यही जानना है. ये figure आपको याद नहीं रखना है. बस आप ये याद रखिए. That from the 2019 till now, there has been increase in the mangrove coverage in the India. Top five states are West Bengal, Gujarat. Andaman, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra. Okay, top five. Remember at least top three: Gujarat, West Bengal, Gujarat, and Andaman. Okay, West Bengal, Gujarat, and Andaman. Global status. You can understand. You can see here. Don't no need to remember it. Just take an idea. Okay, fine. Next is your blue flag certification. Certification. Basically, we are giving a tag. Let us see to whom we are giving a tag. beaches are being certified as blue flag certification okay and total beaches in the world that have got this blue flag certification are just 12 okay 12 aise beaches hain india mein pure usme jisko jo hai blue flag certification mila hai indian beaches that are in blue list are shivrajpur gujarat okay घोगला दीव कसार कोड बदुबिरदी कप्पड़ इन करना केरला ऋषिकोंडा गोल्डन राधानगर कोबलम एडन दीज आर ऑल द नेम्स ऑफ बीचेस ठुंडी बीच इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रिस्टीन एंड पिक्चर्स क्यू बीच इन लक्ष्मदी पार्ची पिलाको सो इफ यू विजिट देयर सी दुंडी बीच क्लियर ओके बेसिकली ब्लू फ्लैग certification refers to the very good quality of beaches blue in color the water is absolutely free from pollution etc and it's a, like a paradise for people kadmat beach 
basically it is very special for cruise tourist who visit lakshadweep for water sport okay understand fine next is your tree outside forest top in india initiative this is also a new initiative trees outside forest matlab forest ke bahar bhi we are promoting the growth of the trees clear and it's a uh, initiative by india to support global climate change mitigation and adaptation goals features basically they will help in bringing together farmers ho gaye companies private institutions to expand the tree cover outside forest okay outside forest basically private sector ka role bhi hai isme yaad rakhiyega implementation by center for intelligence sorry center for international forestry research cefor or world agroforestry milke ye initiative run kar rahe hain building forest building trees construction constructing constructing of more and more trees forest ke bahar so that we are helping the environment theek hai coverage basically seven states mein very important fact for prelims such as your andhra pradesh assam haryana odisha rajasthan tamil nadu uttar pradesh clear now significance ab mujhe aapko batane ki zarurat nahi hai you must be knowing what is the significance actually clear okay मियावाकी मेथड अब हम फॉरेस्ट के बारे में कुछ पढ़ रहे हैं तो लेट अस लर्न व्हाट इज योर मियावाकी मेथड बेसिकली इट्स अ जापानीज मेथड बेसिकली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग दिस इज बीइंग डेवलप्ड बाय अ पर्सन नेम अकीरा मियावाकी दैट हेल्प्स इन बिल्डिंग डेंस नेटिव फॉरेस्ट इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम आप देख सकते हो ये एरिया को देखिए आप लोग वेरी uh, उसमें कुछ प्लांट्स नहीं दिख रहे हैं इट्स इज लाइक अ वेरी नॉर्मल रीजन बट जस्ट इन दैट नाइन मंथ्स you can see the greenery change okay so basically growing of your building dense forest in very less amount of time bought by japanese method okay basically isme kya hota hai various native species of plants are planted close to each other so that the greens receive sunlight only from the top and grow upwards rather than sideways clear basically isme jo alag alag jo plants hai wo पास पास में लगाते हैं ठीक है पास पास में लगाते हैं तो इससे क्या होता है जो सनलाइट आपकी पड़ रही है वो ऐसे पड़ रही है सबको पड़ रही है तो ये सीधा सीधा ग्रो होते हैं इधर उधर नहीं जा पाते क्योंकि इधर कैसे जाएंगे यहाँ पे दूसरे ट्री भी प्लांटेड है ना द अदर ट्री आर ऑल्सो प्लांटेड तो बेसिकली विद द हेल्प ऑफ ईच अदर दे आर बैलेंसिंग एंड ग्रोइंग अपवर्ड इसीलिए दे आर ग्रोइंग थर्टी टाइम्स डेंसर एंड टेन टाइम्स फास्टर understood what is the logic behind this growth okay yeah next is your mattewara forest basically it's a proposed project site in the mattewara on the river satluj clear on the river satluj near ludhiana okay understood basically this ludhiana city reportedly one of the four most polluted cities of respirable suspended particulate matter ये आई है लुधियाना इसमें बहुत ज्यादा पॉल्यूटेड सिटी है दैट इज वाई अ फॉरेस्ट इज बीइंग प्रपोज ऑन द रिवर मट्टेवाड़ा ओके बेसिकली दिस फॉरेस्ट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज लंग्स ऑफ लुधियाना डिस्ट्रिक्ट क्लियर एक प्रोजेक्ट चलने वाला है जो मट्टेवाड़ा फॉरेस्ट के पास है मट्टेवाड़ा फॉरेस्ट रिवर बैंक सतलज के पास है एंड बेसिकली मत्तेवाड़ा वाई इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट इज द लंग्स ऑफ लुधियाना डिस्ट्रिक्ट दैट लुधियाना विच इज वेरी बैड इन पॉल्यूशन क्लियर बहुत सारे स्पीशीज का होम है यहाँ पे यू कैन सी हियर अंडरस्टूड सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट वन प्रोजेक्ट इज बींग प्रपोर्ड इन द प्रपोज इन द रीजन ऑफ मट्टेवाड़ा फॉरेस्ट जो अभी चल रहा है कि दिस में डिस्टर्ब द फॉरेस्ट इकोसिस्टम एंड दैट फॉरेस्ट इकोसिस्टम दैट इज लंग्स ऑफ द लुधियाना ठीक है ओके अंडरस्टूड ओके सो यू कैन सी हियर दिस मॉडर्न इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क दिस इज द प्रोजेक्ट एंड दिस इज नियर द मट्टेवाड़ा प्रोटेक्टेड फॉरेस्ट वॉट इज द कंसर्न कंसर्न इज दैट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट जो मट्टेवाड़ा का जो फॉरेस्ट इको सिस्टम है दैट कैन गेट डिस्टर्ब क्लियर ओके 
Next important thing is your 11 more wetlands have been added. Very important. And we will be learning about that. What are the wetlands added? Clear? Okay. Okay. So, let us see what, uh, what are the 11 wetlands that have been added. And this is very important topic because question may come regarding the places and everything. So, basically first one among the 11 is your Tampara Lake in Odisha. It is in Odisha. Remember it, okay? Tampara Lake, Odisha. It is a freshwater lake. And earlier it is called a stamp by the British. And subsequently after the British, when they moved out from India, they were called as Tampara. Clear? It is very important habitat for the species such as your Carpio, Common Pochard and River Turn. Clear? Next is your Hirakud Reservoir in Odisha. It is the largest earthen dam in Odisha. Clear? Remember and it has started its operation in 1957. Okay. Ansupa Lake in Odisha. All the three which we have learned till now is in Odisha. Tampara, Hirakud, Ansupa. It is also largest freshwater lake in Odisha. It is Oxbow. You must be, aap logo ne geography mein padha hi hoga. What is Oxbow Lake? Okay. Formed by river Mahanadi. When a river is flowing, for example, when a river is flowing and due to some objects, due to some, due to some obstacle, rather than river going here, it goes here and create a new river, the new water body, which is your Oxbow Lake. Okay. It provides safe habitat to many of the species written here. You can go through it. Okay. Next is your Yashwan Sagar in Madhya Pradesh. It is also very important. One of the two important bird areas in Indore region. Remember it. Clear? Also, it is having Saras crane in central India. Vulnerable. Next, your Chitra Gundi bird century in Tamil Nadu. Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. Again, Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu. Three from Odisha, three from Tamil Nadu, one from Madhya Pradesh. Tamil Nadu, Chitra Gundi bird century. Okay, this has been a protected area since 1989. So, Chindram Thirur wetland, it is declared as important bird area and it lies in the Central Asian Flyway. Vaduvar, it is largest human made irrigation tank. Okay, remember it. It is largest Yuha. It provides suitable environment for food, shelter and breeding ground. Okay. Kanjiram, Kulam bird century in Tamil Nadu. This is the next one. Again, Tamil Nadu. Basically, it is having a very several migratory heron species. Okay. Which is responsible for the growth of babul trees. Then is your Thane Creek. It is in Maharashtra. Clear. And this creek is having Ulhas River also. Clear? Remember it. So, these are all important names that has been recently added as the wetland. You need to understand. Clear? Fine. Let us move ahead and see what is next coming on. Till now, I hope everything is clear to you. No doubt and everything. Clear? Fine. Let us move ahead. Menar Wetland, Rajasthan. Okay, next. The two lakes, basically, in the Menar, this, this is in Menar village, the Brahm and Dhand, okay, lay a host to large number of migratory bird species. The two lakes, Brahm and Dhand are the name of the lakes, clear? Basically, this Menar wetland is very important, that is why the forest department has initiated a process to conserve it, okay? You should be understanding. This is Menar wetland and these are two important lakes which you should be knowing it. What are the species found here? Basically more than 150 species are there. Such as your greater flamingo, white-tailed lapwing, pelican, marsh harrier etc. Clear? Bird lovers in Central Asia, Europe, Mongolia. Clear? Other Ramsar site. What are the other Ramsar site? Rajasthan is having two wetlands. In the apart from what we have learned till now, this is Menar, and the other two is your Kyoladeo Ghana and your in your Jaipur district. Clear? Understood? Fine. Next important thing is your Narsh Najafgarh Jeel. 
okay it's a transboundary wetland transboundary refers to in the uh, middle of the two regions okay middle of the two regions these are the two regions and in between it is having what are the two regions delhi and haryana it is in between delhi and haryana but it is under the control of delhi remember it all the species which are habitat here are written here you can go through it okay next is your boma capturing technique of africa this is very unique technique actually okay basically it is a type of technique to capture what what is being captured we will be looking here basically you can see here see these are deer standing and what is boma capturing basically these deer are provided a luring luring means in in logo ko kuch lalach diya jata hai okay लालच दे के इनको फनल के अंदर बुलाया जाता है फनल लाइक फेंसिंग होता है जिसमें वो कुछ खाने का हुआ या कुछ ऐसी चीज हुई जिससे एनिमल्स विल गेट ल्यूड मतलब कि उनको लालच अट्रैक्टेड एंड व्हेन दे एंटर इनटू दैट दे आर कैप्चर्ड क्लियर बेसिकली इट इज ग्रीन नेट होता है टू मेक इट ओपेक फॉर द एनिमल्स विच आर हर्डेड इन लार्ज व्हीकल okay so this is boma capturing you should be understanding this has originated from africa clear okay you should be learning about it next is your forest conservation rules of 2022 basically this conservation rules have been regulated under the forest conservation act of 1980 forest conservation rules obviously these are those rules which will help in conserving the forest they will come out with many steps okay policies ideas innovations to protect forest and wildlife okay to increase the area under forest clear so these are all the aim basically forest is advisory committee is also set up for the proper implementation and it says that for forest land beyond 5 hectares Approval for diverting land must be given by central government. क्या बोला जा रहा है कि अगर कोई ऐसा forest land है जिसका area फाइव हेक्टेयर से ज्यादा है और उसको हम वी आर ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग इट इन टू नॉन फॉरेस्टेड एरिया तो इसके लिए परमिशन ऑफ सेंटर इज मैंडेटरी क्लियर सेंट्रल इज मस्ट बी गिवेन ओके सो दिस हैज बीन डन बाई फॉरेस्ट एडवाइजरी कमिटी इट इज ए कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कमिटी बेसिकली एफ ए सी ही कन्विंस कर अप्रूव करती है या रिजेक्ट करती है डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट एवर द इम्पोर्टेंस इज ओके क्लियर एंड ऑल्सो वेन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इज ट्राइंग टू डाइवर्ट द फॉरेस्ट एरिया फ्रॉम नॉन फॉरेस्टेड एरिया दे शुड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट द प्रोविजन शुड बी अंडर द फॉरेस्ट राइट एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्स ऑल्सो द डाइवर्टेड लैंड वहाँ पे जितने भी काम है compensatory land should be also given for the afforestation clear as well as pay the net present value for example this is my forested area now this forested area has been diverted into non forested area such as your dam building building construction infrastructure so whatever the amount of, i need to uh, whatever the amount is in the present scenario the value i need to pay that state government apart from that is it साइज का एक और लैंड आई नीड टू पे फॉर द कंपनसेशन ठीक है ओके नेक्स्ट कमिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज योर ग्रेडेड रिस्पॉन्स एक्शन प्लान बेसिकली इट्स ए स्टेप बाय स्टेप प्लान टू काउंटर द डेली एनसीआर डिटोरेटिंग एयर क्वालिटी क्लियर इट इज अ स्टेप बाय स्टेप प्लान फॉर बेसिकली टारगेटिंग द पॉल्यूशन हैपनिंग इन द डेली एनसीआर रीजन ओके ग्रेडेड रिस्पॉन्स एक्शन प्लान it was formulated by epca remember this body environmental pollution prevention and control authority along with the delhi government in 2017 okay this is emergency response mechanism for controlling the air pollution clear you need to understand it basically it has been prepared for implementation under aqi and various categories has also been given moderate and poor very poor severe severe plus as per the situation what is going on clear fine so you should understand that whatever category we have discussed here so far they are also having measures how we can improve that quality if it is in moderate to poor 
so basically we need to have stringent enforcement of puc checks if it is having very poor what we would need to do shutting down of diesel generator sets etc more more uh, strict act you need to take depending upon the category clear it is mentioned here next is very important again that is your carbon capture and utilization technologies okay basically here what is the technology carbon capture and utilization and sequestration ccus very important for your examination basically to lower the global, global warming the highest potential or the main gas which is culprit because the co2 no Uh, CO2. I know that it is very harmful for global warming, but I also want to tell you that there are some other gases also apart from carbon dioxide, such as your methane and your uh, black carbon soot, that are having more potential of global warming than carbon dioxide. But still, the focus is on CO2 because this gas is responsible for production of other gases. CO2 से ही आपका सूट निकल रहा है CO2 से ही आपका मीथेन निकल रहा है ओके एनी हाउ अगर हम CO2 का कहीं पे यूज कर रहे हैं कंबर्शन हुआ ये हुआ तो उससे ये सब चीजें निकलती हैं सो दैट इज वाई जो बोलते हैं ना जो कहावत है कि किसी चीज को जड़ से हटाओ तो टू रिमूव कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड व्हाट वी आर हैविंग अ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी दैट इज योर कार्बन कैप्चर वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर कैप्चरिंग द कार्बन एंड वी आर रिसाइकलिंग इट फॉर यूटिलाइजेशन and we are storing it okay for the future purpose store karna hai jaise ocean beds ho gaye aapke forest ho gaya ye sab jagah pe store karna hai and basically what we can do by storing we can capture uh, and we can convert it into fuel also refrigerants also and building material also and that captured co2 can be used in fire extinguishers pharma industry food and beverage industry as well as agriculture sector so in this way hum environment se carbon dioxide ko hata bhi rahe hain aur uska proper use bhi kar rahe hain clear okay next topic is your national clean air program this is also very important launched in 2019 by ministry of environment basically aim is to bring 20 to 30% reduction in pollution of pm 2.5 and pm 10 by 2024 and what is the base 2017 is the base what is the aim basically i am trying to write again that we need to reduce 20 to 30% of pm 2.5 and pm 10 by 2024 and what is my base year base year if you want to compare that is 20 17 clear what are the cities covered basically 132 cities are covered and these cities are named as non attainment cities because they are not able to fulfill the proper air quality okay proper air quality ka jo criteria fulfill nahi kar pate hain un cities ko non attainment cities bola jata hai clear you should be understanding it funding who is funding basically funding you should know funding under this program cities are required to quantify improvement starting from this 2020 okay anything fewer will be considered low aisa bola ja raha hai basically for dispersing the funds the central pollution control board considers level of pm10 okay however pm2.5 is smaller and not not monitored robustly due to the lack of equipment See, depending upon the uh, effort you are putting it, the funding is being done. Generally, funding किस को देख के होती है PM10 को, because PM10 is larger in size as compared to PM2.5. PM2.5 इतना छोटा होता है कि उसको नेक डाई से नहीं देख सकते. So we are having very less equipment to see PM2.5. इसलिए we are not able to judge whether cities are performing well or not. Clear? this is your current affairs part that is your a new target has been set that is having a 40% reduction in pm concentration covered under the ncap by 2026 2026 tak humko 40% karna hai earlier what was the target 20 to 30% till 2024 however this has been changed to this new target has been set next important is 
thing is your battery waste management rules of 2022. Aim is to ensure the environmentally sound management of waste batteries. Already you must be aware about the bad effects of electronic waste improper settlement there. Okay. So basically this rule battery waste management rule will replace the battery management and handling rules of 2001. This is very important. 2001 mein bhi ek rule aaya tha. Usi ko rule aaya hai. What all types of batteries are covered? Electric vehicle battery, portable battery, automotive battery, industrial battery. Okay. Next. Forest Rights Act of 2006. This is also very important. Basically, these are rights given to recognize to those people who are living in the forest such as your forest dwelling tribal communities, other traditional forest dwellers, OT, FD. Basically, all these people are living since years and now what is happening because of rapid industrialization, forest is being removed. So, unka livelihood bhi effect ho hai. So, to protect their rights, this act has came into effect. What are the individual rights the people are having, such as your self-cultivation, habitation, okay? Community rights kya kya hai? Such as grazing, fishing, okay? You need to understand it. Some traditional customary rights are also there, okay? Depending upon their beliefs of God. So, that is why these rights have been provided to them. It also provides right to allocation of forest for developmental purpose to fulfill the basic infrastructure needs of community. Understand it, okay? Apart from this right to forest act, right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition, rehabilitation and settlement act of 2013 is also there and it is protecting the tribal population. Okay, remember the role of Gram Sabha here. Basically, Gram Sabha and <coughs> rights holders are responsibility of conservation and protection of biodiversity. Okay. Under this Forest Rights Act, Gram Sabha ko bohat hi power mili gai hai. That will decide in the determination of local policies and scheme impacting them. That what type of scheme and policies we should come out that will help to impact their lives. Clear? Fine. Next is your dam rehabilitation and improvement project. This was launched in 2012 by the Central Water Commission CWC with the help of World Bank. What are the ob objective of DRIP? DRIP, what is DRIP? Dam rehabilitation, improvement and project. This is only DRIP. 2012 may launch water. By name itself, it is suggesting that to improve the safety and operational performance of dam. Also to strengthen the dam safety institutional of participating states. Clear? You should understand that. Basically, there are many phases. First phase covers 223 dams in 7 states. Okay. Phase 2 and 3 covers apart from or phase 2 and 3 covers this. And in this phase, financial assistance is given by World Bank and AIIB. You should remember it. Clear? Yeah? And this will be implemented. This phase 2 and 3 will be implemented for 10 years. Okay? Till from 2021 to 2031. Basically, which means that currently we are in phase 2 and 3 of the drip. Okay? Objectives are given here. What all objectives are there? You need to remember it in the drip phase. To improve the safety, existing selecting dams, okay, to strengthen the dam safety institutional setup. Also to provide alternative incident incidental means at few selected dams, okay. So basically you should be remember it. You should remember all the steps and objectives of the drip, okay. So I hope till this point you all are clear. And uh, everything, every point has been clear till this point. And this was the last topic for the environment. We have, I have covered important species. I have covered important places. And some of the important processes also I have covered here, which can be a potential concept coming in your prelims examination. So with this, I am ending my lecture. I hope you enjoyed our prelims by series of UPSC prelims 2023.
and we have designed in such a way that you are covering static also you are covering your current affairs also you are covering previous year questions also and i hope that you all have understood everything in a very holistic manner so do give me the feedback how you liked it all the best for your upcoming prelims examination if in future if we feel that this topic or this subject is important so we will definitely bring out the new video for you and keep giving feedback and keep watching and sharing the lectures thank you for your time